Herbert Spencer, English philosopher, social and political theorist said, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Sir Bob Geldof, musician and humanitarian, has inspired us with his music, with his personality, and most of all, with his action on behalf of a continent in turmoil, on behalf of people almost left behind by the rest of the world. He has worked tirelessly to raise awareness of world poverty and urged world leaders to find solutions for helping the poorest countries. Sir Bob, your action, our inspiration to all of us, and welcome you. Bob Geldof, you are a unique and amazing person, a very talented art artist <laughs> who, instead of enjoying the limelight of glory, drafted his persona and image for the eradication of hunger in Africa. At Ben Gurion University, we have an African center with similar aims, and I hope we'll be able to join forces in the future to advance this cause. Thank you, too. I now call upon Bob Geldof to please rise and approach the podium. I ask the president and the rector to join the honorary. The scroll reads, the Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Bob Geldof in recognition of a talented singer, songwriter, and actor, and a prominent fighter for human rights and aid for the poor, whose inspiring actions have raised awareness around the world of poverty and famine in Africa. In acknowledgement of his long-standing contribution to the global music industry and his dedication to the noble cause of supporting those in need. In admiration for an exceptional artist who has produced international events, including the notable Live Aid and Live Eight concerts, all the revenues from which were designated to eradicating hunger in Africa, and for which he won many prizes and distinctions, including Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire and the Nobel Man of Peace Award. In deep appreciation of one who has recruited nations around the world to cancel the debts of the poorest countries, and who has focused his many talents on the struggle for fathers' rights in Britain, and in honor of a man for whom peace between all people is close to his heart, and who devotes his time and efforts to creating a just and better future for coming generations. By conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The rector will confer the hood. The president will present the scroll. This is the third school I visited today. Um, I first have to do my duty and extend the warm greetings of the faculties of Al-Quds University to you all this evening. They specifically asked me to do that, so now I extend their uh, warm regards to you. Three hours ago, I was talking to some children in Gaza, and now I'm with you. And how intolerable all of this is. I don't have the formal learning or indeed the, um, the expertise of my fellow recipients, but I do know that the freed Roman slave, I'm never sure exactly what his name is. I mean, Martin Gilbert will correct me. I thought it was Euripides, but he's probably not Roman and he probably wasn't a slave and he probably wasn't freed. <laughs> Only the educated are free. And in the near 30 years that I've been going to Africa, it's an absolute truth with the education that people have received over the years, states have begun to cohere. With the people, the scientists, the doctors that I've met from this country, and particularly their expertise in desert agriculture, the education they've brought have made deserts cohere, peoples cohere, the state in turn cohere around learning and knowledge. And it's only in that 
that the mind escapes the trap of now, the everyday, the prosaic, dull practicalities of the political moment that will not survive beyond the closing hours of a day, that reinvent themselves daily through some notion of history. It will pass these moments that can become existential. And it's only through the curiosity that only learning and knowledge can satisfy that you escape those chains, those chosen chains, to be trapped in a moment of now, to self-impose a siege of the soul, a ghetto of the mind. And how can a people like the people of Israel, so known through history for having been famously accepted into other countries and contributing so hugely, so enormously to those cultures, here's some of them, and so infamously rejected. When the only escape of the people of this country was in the head, was through knowledge and learning, where that's how you earned respect within the Jewish community, by excellence. And when you transferred that to others, is that not the greatness of this people? And how can the political leaders of this moment be so narrow been so constricted to not have the enormity of that history, to not have the understanding that it was that huge universe of the mind that allowed them to survive through all those millennia of often infamy. And I've only been here 48 hours, I'm a little tired. We get up early, we go to bed late. But yesterday when I spoke to the young people dedicated to eliminating the abomination of poverty, that thing that prevents anything, that thing that produces hunger, lack of education, ill health, conflict, corruption, it's only an empirical economic condition. They're simply the symptoms of it. The structures of that condition are as ever political and economic. The structures of the problem here today are a trap. It's a trap. The children in Gaza, those elegant people in Al-Quds, the brilliant people here tonight, we can move beyond it. What we see is like in the aridity of the desert that you so brilliantly made bloom, not just with green, but with this. That definite courage that said it's not just sand, it's a city. What we lack in our leaders is any vision of a future that is acceptable to normal, educated, tactile, sentient, productive, creative, and dynamic human beings. I reject the rejectionism of now. And the two sides must be at a point where they must have leaders that understand that one day they must sit down, they must talk, they must tolerate, they must respect, they must understand. I'm allowed to say this because I'm Irish. And all my life I lived amongst murderers and killers who were killing my own people. I was ashamed to be Irish in Britain as the bombs inevitably went off. And yet, it passes. And last week, we saw the Queen of England to my absolute amazement that I should see this in my life, be warmly accepted, welcomed, and emotionally 
mutually rejoicing in a past that is best left there. This will happen in this country. It will happen because of institutions like this that bring together the several tribes of this country. And it will happen in the broader reaches of this nation and in this piece of land. And if artists can help to bring that about, good. But I am certain, I am certain that where it begins is in the expansion of the mind that allows for knowledge, creativity, and forces the politicians of now only to move beyond the narrow, restrictive mentality that prevents peace. I'm deeply honoured to be with you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you.